Okay, today is the day that everyone has asked for, everyone has waited for. Today's the GoPro color edit video. By far the most requested video ever on this channel. You guys wanna know how to edit GoPro footage. I keep saying you should shoot in flat mode and then everyone says, if I shoot in flat mode, then how do I make it look pretty? Today, we're gonna go through the basics of, of how to do that. But first, the t-shirts again. Guys, these things are going all over the world. We've got Niklas from Germany, Amy from the United Kingdom, Christian in Norway, and, and Darren in the United Kingdom all getting shirts this week. Um, I'm very excited that those are going all over the world. Six countries so far and 19 US states. So not to leave out you people in the US, but 19 states, that's awesome. I appreciate the heck out of you guys. If you, if you haven't ordered a shirt yet, grab a Be A Good Human shirt at the link below. I think this might be the last run that we do of them and then we'll, I don't know, we'll think of something else. So if you haven't and you want to, grab a Be A Good Human shirt. Just a good message to send during all this craziness in the world. And thank you guys again. I, I appreciate the heck out of you. Okay, today we are jumping into Premiere Pro. That's where I'm gonna show you how I edit my GoPro footage, but the concepts apply to any program. So really, we're gonna go over concepts and some of the tools that are in Premiere Pro. They're most likely also in the editing program that you work with, so hang in there. If you use Premiere Pro, awesome. If not, uh, you might learn something anyways. Then take it back to your editing program and boom, magic. I also wanna say, editing is subjective. How you edit versus how I edit might be totally different. So, so don't look at this video so much as, hey, this is the right way to color grade, as much as look at the tools that I use, how to adjust things, and use the tools that we're teaching today to make the vibe and the look that you want. Because some people are gonna want their footage sharper, more contrasty, super saturated, and then some people are gonna want it de-sharpened and not saturated and not contrasty at all. Neither one is better, they're just different. So save your comments on you not liking how I color graded or it should be more saturated or it should be less saturated. Save your time, I, I don't care. <laughs> I care about you guys, I just, I like what I like. And you should like what you like. So let's dig into the tools. I'll show you how I use them. And then you guys, you get to edit however you like. Okay, into Premiere Pro here. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit so we can see. I pulled in some clips from our Hawaii video when we went to YPO Valley. It was amazing and awesome. Uh, I shot this all on GoPro and all in flat color profile. Some of you that might have seen our Hawaii video might remember this day when I bring Morgan a beer. Eleanor and her are sitting on a blanket. Then I go, I cross a river, and then Morgan tickles Eleanor. So the very first thing you're gonna realize just for the total basics is this is the editing tab. This is the, the general default workspace that you're gonna get when you open up Premiere and you bring some files in. So right over here is where I dragged my files in. Here are my video files right here. I have an audio file that's in there and uh, I think that's about it. I created an adjustment layer already, but I'll delete that because I'm gonna show you how to do that later. Trash. And the really cool thing with Premiere is that you can adjust this workspace however you like. So if you look up here at the top, there is the color editing workspace, the effects workspace, the audio workspace, and these are just bringing different modules into the sidebars that they've kind of set up for you. But you can set up whatever you'd like. So if you look up here on the top over here on the left is David workspace. This is just how I like my workspace to look. So if you open Premiere, it doesn't look like this. It's just because you haven't made your own workspace yet. Okay, so down here I have my timeline. I've put these clips on there. And if I go to my effects tab here, I have my preset dropdown. These are the presets that I've used in the past. Today we're not gonna use them. We're just gonna start from scratch, drop a new adjustment layer on and start editing. And speaking of adjustment layers, up here in your project panel, right at the bottom here, you're gonna have this little guy that says new item. I'm gonna click that and say adjustment layer. This is the settings for my timeline. I say okay, and boom, I have an adjustment layer in the project panel. I'm gonna click that, drag that down on top of my timeline and zoom way in on it so that I can grab the end and I can drag it over the entire sequence. Okay, so the adjustment layer is on top of my sequence. Now, the reason that you wanna use adjustment layers instead of just clicking on the clip themselves and start doing edits is that 
it's less destructive. It's like working with layers in Photoshop. You don't wanna work on the actual image, you wanna put layers on top so that later you could turn them off, you could turn the opacity of that layer down, you can do all sorts of things because you really haven't messed with that original picture in Photoshop. In here, it's your clips and we use adjustment layers instead of Photoshop layers. I hope that makes sense. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is kind of flip through the footage. I go here, I grab a beer from Morgan, I bring it over to her. There's Eleanor looking, oh my gosh, she's still so young in this video. And me talking to camera for a little bit. And then some more of Eleanor walking across the river. Okay, I think I'm gonna go with this. I'm gonna go with this spot here, this, this clip. And the reason that I'm choosing this is one, it's really even lighting and I have a lot of color in here. I have a lot of color up in these greens. I have a lot of color in the umbrella. I have skin tones. That's great to have in the image that you're kind of using as a reference to color grade. And now that I've chosen the actual frame where I'm gonna start doing my color grade, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna click on the adjustment layer. And there's two ways that I can actually add the Lumetri color grade onto here. One, I can go into my effects tab. I can type in Lumetri color. That's gonna pull this guy up. I can grab this and drop it on here. That's gonna bring this up in my effects panel. I can start making my corrections in here. That's not great. There's a much better way to do it. And all I need to do is click on the color workspace at top and on this right hand side, automatically the Lumetri color panel is gonna be there. As soon as I do even one tiny adjustment, a Lumetri color pops onto this clip. So if I click on my clip below it, you see I don't have a Lumetri color effect. If I click on the adjustment layer, now I have a Lumetri color effect. Now over here on the right side is where we're gonna start making these adjustments. I can start exposure, highlights, shadows, whites, all these different things I can now do because that Lumetri color effect is now applied to that adjustment layer. And anything below that adjustment layer is going to receive whatever's on that adjustment layer. So if I put a Lumetri effect on the adjustment layer, the clip below it, gets that effect as well. Okay, and you can totally just edit like this. These are all great things to be able to work with. I have a preferred color workspace that I've set up. It's a whole new workspace that's just for me coloring. It brings in my scopes so I can see different parts of the image. I can see my whites and my blacks and, and where my colors are pushing towards. That's all the advanced stuff. We're not even gonna touch it today. We're gonna go over the basics. We're visually just gonna look at the image and edit based on visuals. All right, so let's dig into the basic correction panel. We're gonna open this guy up and I'm, I'm gonna just start messing with this. I'm gonna add a lot of contrast because the flat profile in general has a very low contrast. It's really trying to give you as much dynamic range as possible so that you can do all the contrast and editing in post. Again, the idea behind the flat profile is to give you editing in post control. It's not to process it in camera. It's saying, hey, you, you process it later. You choose what you want. I'm gonna just record what's in front of me and you do it later. Whereas if you have GoPro color settings, it's GoPro's preset basically. All right, so I'm gonna go back through here. I'm gonna be just keeping an eye on things, really crank the contrast on there. I'm gonna dip the highlights and the whites quite a bit. That's gonna give us a little bit more of that dynamic range look. It's gonna look a little bit more professional. It'll color grade a little better with things like my Sony. Bring those whites down, highlights. And then I'm gonna play with the, the white balance. Basically, I just kind of crank it until it goes, oh, that's way too warm. And then I dip it and I go, that's way too blue. So really where it was at is pretty good. This was a cloudy day, so I don't wanna, I don't wanna try to fake it too much. Might pump a bit of magenta in there, tweak that. And that looks pretty good for white balance. I'm, I'm digging the white balance on that. Again, I'm not going crazy and and you totally can. If you want to go crazy with it, you can you can bump this up, you could dump your blacks, you could add a bunch of saturation and make it look crazy. Totally up to you. My personal preference is is less of that. I like more of a flatter image. I think I think real life isn't as saturated as some of the videos that we end up seeing. When you look around in real life, things aren't crazy high contrast. The cinematic look or what people say is a little bit more what you actually see in real life. Again, my personal opinion, I don't care about yours. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna keep messing around in here. I'm gonna bring the blacks down even more, I think. I like that. I'm gonna boost that a bit. And honestly, that's probably about what I would do right here. This is, 
This is looking really good to me. So I can go down here and make this a bit bigger. I can turn that adjustment layer off. That's the before, that's what it looked like out of camera. Turn this on, this is the adjustment layer that we've applied. And just by turning it off and on sometimes, you see something, and I'm seeing that it looks a little too magenta. I'm gonna dip this back down just a touch. That looks pretty good to me. Let's, let's add a little saturation just for, just for giggles. Beautiful, I like that a lot. That's already looking really good. And because this is an adjustment layer that goes across all of my clips, I can go back here and look at Eleanor and Morgan and say, hey, that looks pretty good. Turn that off and back on. She's looking cute. I can go down here to her again. Looking adorable. Oh, very sleepy. Very, very sleepy. I can go back here to the beer moment. I can turn that off, turn that back on. You can see that's added a ton of contrast in there. Really dipped the shadows in there. I might pull those back up on just that clip, but I'll show you how I do that. And this is all looking pretty good. That's a little dark, I might bump that. This shot is obviously the best looking one because that's the one we color graded off of. And, and that one's looking pretty good. Turn that off and on. You can see quite a difference. So that's just the basic panel. We haven't done anything but the basics and we've already gotten a much better looking image. So quickly we're gonna dip down to the creative tab. This is where you can add looks that you might have in there already or that you've bought online. Again, I don't think you need to do that. I think you can just make all your own looks and LUTs and presets in Premiere yourself and then save them for future use. In here, I am gonna add a little bit of sharpening. I'm gonna bring sharpening up to 10 because again, on my GoPro, I have the sharpen setting at low. I don't want a GoPro trying to sharpen my footage. I want to do that on this beast of a computer. So let's bring that up, maybe even the 20. Let's go, let's meet in the middle at 15. So we'll go 15 on that. And then curves. Curves could be an entire video just on curves alone. The only thing that I'm gonna do right now, just to keep this really simple, is I'm gonna pin my shadows so I don't really move my shadows around too much. I'm gonna bring that black point up just a touch. And basically what this is gonna do is make the blacks in my image not fully black. So like 95-ish percent black, but they won't go totally black. And again, I like that. I think it's a little bit more cinematic, has a little bit better feel to it. I'm gonna bring the mid-tones back up. That's gonna bring some contrast in. So if you see this down, if I bring that up, uh, the mid-tones are here, the shadows and blacks are down here, and the highlights and whites are up here. So I can kind of play with each of these individually. Again, this is its own video, just the curves panel. I'm just showing you guys what I like to do. And then down here, these are the new verse panel, hue, saturation, curves panel, but it's, it's really the verse panel because it's hue versus saturation, hue versus hue, Q versus Luma, Luma versus saturation, saturation versus saturation. This could also be its own video, but we're gonna briefly, briefly touch on it. Let's say up here, hue versus saturation. I, I wanna mess with these trees back there. I want my greens to look a little different. I'm gonna grab this little eyedropper and I'm gonna click on the greens and boom, this is where it tells me that that's the color I just clicked on. It's, it's somewhere right in here. So I can grab this middle point and I can then either, either add saturation by dragging it up or bring the saturation down. And I'm only going to affect that color range that I've just clicked on. And then I can also do something like I can click on skin tones and that'll tell me that they're right in here somewhere. So I can either bump my skin tones to make me look oddly tan and orangey or I can, I can dump them a little bit if they're looking too orangey or, or the person's face is looking a little odd because he looks so orange. I, I think they're not terrible, so I'm not really gonna move them too much. They're, they're decent where they were. And that's pretty much all I'm gonna mess with in these panels right now. Again, if an image really needed color correction, I might do that, or if I was trying to put a certain style of grade on there, I might really dig in here and start messing with colors. And the only other one that I ever really mess with is hue versus hue, and that's, that's to shift hues. If I'm trying to take one specific color and I wanna move the hue on it, like let's, let's go back. Oops, let's unpin that. Let's go back to something back here. Where we really have a strong color. All right, so let's let's grab these greens. Same thing, we're gonna grab this picker. I'm gonna get in there and grab just that green, put these pins here, and just, just watch those greens. Just just the greens are are going wild. And then going all the way down to color wheels, this is this is where I can say, hey, I wanna bring a little bit of teal maybe into my mid-tones and shadows. I like both in there and then highlights. I can bring those up a little bit warm, just a touch. And this is just giving a little bit of that, 
that teal orangey look. So if I turn that on and off, you can see how much that changes things. And then after I'm done with my color wheels, I'm gonna go back up to my basic tab and this is where I'm really gonna kind of hone in my final look. I'm gonna say, now I know how I have everything else. My colors are all right. I really know where it's at. I might even add a touch more saturation right there. And this is, this is my final look that we're gonna do today. So if I turn this off, I turn this back on, you can see it is, it is drastically different than how we started. And again, you can go way further. You could really edit the heck out of this. You could sharpen it, you could saturate it. You can do whatever you like to do. It's just subjective. This is what I like. And then after all that, I'm gonna go through these clips down here and I'm gonna be clicking on them now and making very slight adjustments. So we're gonna play this back and as I go through here, I might say this, this clip right here, I think it needs a little bit more brightness to it. I think the exposure needs to be turned up. And now I'm actually selected on the clip. I'm not selected on the adjustment layer. Now I'm actually selecting the clip. And same thing, I'm gonna just add a little bit of exposure here. I might boost the shadows a bit, bring the blacks down. And that, that looks pretty good right there. I like that. And I can go over here to my effects control. I can Apple C and click the next clip because it's in the same lighting. Apple V to paste it, and now both of those look about the same. And since this is the same lighting, I'm gonna Apple V that, Apple V that, and this last one. Let's command paste it as well. Okay, I think that is it. That is how I color grade my GoPro footage. That is how I use the tools within Premiere Pro to do it. Sometimes I do it more cinematic style, sometimes I do it more action style, but if you film in flat profile on your GoPro, you have that option, you have that latitude to kind of go one way or the other. If you film in GoPro color, that more action-y look, it's really, really difficult to then color grade it to make it look flatter and more cinematic. So it takes a bit more work, but when you film in flat, you have options later of, of which way you wanna go. Okay, I hope this helped you guys. I hope you got a lot out of this. I hope you start playing around in there. There's a ton to play with more than anything. That's what I suggest is bring footage in there. Start playing with it. Start tweaking things and seeing what does what. Grab a handle and yank it hard. And See what happens to your footage. If this did help you guys today, hit the like button below. It helps me a ton. And, and grab a t-shirt. We're almost out, but, but we still have... We have enough, but we're getting low. And thanks to all you guys all over the world that are ordering them. That's the coolest. I, I appreciate that so much. I dream of one day we're traveling and we're somewhere else in the world and I see somebody walking around with a Be A Good Human shirt. That would be... That'd be insane. And I will end you guys off with, with this entire sequence so that you can see exactly how I color graded it. And I'll make a little slider thingy bit go back and forth so you can see the before and after. And I'll see you guys very soon. <laughs> I don't have a good ending. I need like a, I need one of those like catchphrase endings that some guys have. I don't wanna do that. No catchphrase endings. Well, our plans are basically to hang out here in YPO Valley, so maybe some drone shots now? But this is pretty much our day. We're not, we're not going far. Are we gonna go hike up, you think? Probably not. We might just stay here. This is great. This is the dream. All right, we're just hanging out here. And YPO Valley also has a bunch of wild horses that just charge around. And right on the other side of the river, a herd of wild horses showed up. <laughs> you better watch out. You better. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs>